When we um, think about the perils that are facing the country, and make no mistake, we are in a perilous period of American history. Uh, I can't think of a time in my adult lifetime when the country, the American dream, uh, our own future and the future of our children, grandchildren hung more in the balance. I'm not saying that all is lost, but I'm saying that we are kind of in danger of losing a lot, if not all. And certainly America is in danger of losing its position in the world. Now, in this we are tempted to, and I focus normally on the left, on the Democrats. They are certainly the mechanism, the instrument of causing the weakening, the downfall, perhaps in the end, the destruction of the United States. But um, part of the problem that we're dealing with is that we don't have an alternative party, a Republican party. And we should be really clear because sometimes out of frustration or just disgust and perhaps despair, people imagine, well, maybe we should create a new party, a third party. And, uh, but I don't think that those alternatives are viable. America, by and large, has functioned really from almost the very beginning as a two-party system. Originally, of course, there was just one party, the Washington's party, the Federalists. But ever since you had the Federalists and then Jefferson's party, we've kind of had a two-party system. Sometimes a new party shows up, but then one of the older parties falls by the wayside. And, um, and so the Republican Party is kind of all we've got, is what I'm saying. But the Republican Party just seems to be um, feeble, uh, unimaginative, unenergetic, um, not equal to the creativity and ruthlessness of the other side. And so a lot of our job, in my view, is to focus on our own party and build it up, uh, try to infuse in it the intelligence, the strength, the resourcefulness, and the resources that it needs uh, to be able to thwart, defeat, overcome, and put its own ideas in the place of the bad ideas that the other side is trying to, um, uh, to implement. If you ask right now, what are the ideas the Republican Party is putting forward, I would have to say that there are virtually none. The Republican Party is saying, let's reverse Biden's border policy. Uh, the Republican Party is saying, let's stop this promiscuous spending. Uh, let's not engage in fruitless adventures and costly uh, and dangerous adventures abroad. But this is a kind of a, um, a negative agenda. We will not do this and we will not do that, leaving the impression that you're, you're not going to be doing anything at all. You're merely going to be abstaining from bad things uh, that the other side is doing. And this, it seems to me, is hardly adequate. Now, the fault of not having a clear vision, a clear set of ideas, a clear set of policy proposals isn't one of the GOP alone. It's also the fault of the conservative, you may say, intelligentsia, the conservative policy community, the intellectual movement that has really fallen short at a time when it too is sorely needed. Uh, so many of the conservative intellectuals are wasting their time in internecine battles. They're jostling for position at various think tanks. Uh, they're trying to carve out their own niche on social media. You don't have the idea that we're part of a movement. When I was in the Reagan, uh, not just in the administration, but just in the Reagan years, we all felt we were part of a conservative movement. In other words, we were fighting together. We had people on the legal front. You had people who were journalists and writers. You had academics. You had people who were foreign policy experts. You were people who were in the entrepreneurial or the business field, but we were a team. And that sense of being a team, um, I don't have a sense that that really is there anymore. We have to remember when we think back to the 1970s and 80s, that Reaganism, what we call Reaganism, didn't come full blown from Reagan. It wasn't just that everybody was really confused, there were no ideas, and then Reagan came marching along and said, hey, how about 
Um, how about tax cuts? How about privatization? How about deregulation? How about uh, funding and supporting guerrilla movements fighting for freedom in other countries? Uh, how about uh, the MX missile? And how about a uh, missile defense program to bankrupt the Soviet Union? No, virtually all of those ideas were devised by a conservative intellectual community and policy community prior to Reagan. So the point I'm trying to make is that Reaganism preceded Reagan. And then Reagan came along, grabbed onto these ideas, obviously became their exemplar and spokesman. And so for those of us uh, who, for those people who are waiting for a conservative savior to show up on the scene uh, with all these ideas in his back pocket or her back pocket, I guess what I'm saying is it's not going to happen quite that way. A lot of us have a lot of work to do in putting forward a positive agenda for the Republican Party. And then we persuade leaders who are effective messengers of those ideas to grab onto those ideas and to carry them through to victory. <laughs>